Streams and natural areas are important to our communities. People and their pets walk near them, children play on them. Unfortunately, when streams are near industrial areas, there's sometimes accidental contamination from heavy metals or other chemicals. Contaminants can hold on to or sorb the clay and organic matter that is suspended in muddy looking waters. Some scientists refer to this as complexation. Of course, some chemicals can completely dissolve in water. So just because the stream looks clear, it doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't contaminated. To protect our environment and the people who use this water, scientists use a very careful and detailed sampling system to test the water and soil. Let's dig into the soil to understand why. Here's a one foot square of soil. We'll pretend this dye is some sort of contaminant, something that might enter the environment from factory waste or cooling towers. Let's pour it onto the soil to see what happens. The way this liquid enters and moves through the soil is called infiltration. As contaminants move through the soil, they undergo processes such as absorption and adsorption. Absorption, being incorporated into another substance. Adsorption, adhering to the surface of another substance. Let's wait 24 hours to let the dye percolate through the soil. Now that the dye has had time to seep down through the soil, we'll slice the soil to see what happened. Let's walk down into the soil pit. Hmm, why didn't the dye infiltrate the soil uniformly? It's easy to spot some of the reasons. Here, it ran down this wormhole. Over here, it followed the path of a root. But we need to look at the soil microscopically to understand some of the other flow patterns. What causes irregular adsorption? Water and contaminants act differently when they encounter physical obstructions, chemical obstructions, or when things get sorbed, stuck to surfaces. To learn more about that, watch our sorption animation and other videos in the Science of Agriculture series. Now let's shave off an inch and look at the surface again, and again, and again. After comparing all of the slices, scientists can build a 3D model showing the soil's pores. In the lab, you can do this very precisely, to the cubic centimeter or even smaller. This can show you how the dye, or contaminant, travels through different soils. By taking a large number of soil samples from many different locations and then building 3D models, scientists have discovered that contaminants can infiltrate natural soils in complex ways. That's why, for example, when scientists try to determine whether they need to restrict use of a part of the stream, they need soil samples from the stream bed in many locations, both upstream and downstream of where the soil and organic matter in the stream bed may be holding on to the contaminant. Then scientists can try to predict where the contaminant is going and how fast it's moving. They take samples at different times of the year to understand the impacts of high water, low water, freezing, and thawing on the movement of contaminants. Scientists work hard to understand what's happening in our streams and stream beds. That's because they want to keep our waterways safe for us all to enjoy. <laughs>